Okay. All right. Count me in in Hebrew or Spanish or whatever you count in. Ready in cinco, cuatro, <laughs> tres. Terrible. Dos. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Where my mom's? Where my mom's? Where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's? Where my mom's? Where my mom's at? Where my mom's at? Christina P. Oh my gosh, I have the most adorablest, chillest comic in the world. First, let me plug some shit, get it out of the way. Vancouver, going back to Canada, the Vogue Theater, February 16th, and then I added an early show in Seattle at the Neptune, and then we added a show in New Dork Titties, March 23rd, an early show. I don't fuck around, you guys. I know your parents. Nobody wants to go to a 10 o'clock show. I certainly don't want to do a late show, so I've added them early. Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. And then Ridgefield Playhouse, come Neticunt, March 24th. ChristinaPOnline.com for tickets. What else? Oh, buy my lipstick if you haven't already. I'm adding three new colors coming up, and I'm so pumped for you guys to see it, to trot out. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. All right, with me. You know, I've been thinking about you, Rafael Barbosa. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hello. Cowabunga, his special is out on Netflix. He's just like, you know, you're just like, you're so, I've been, th- okay, I've been thinking about you since you came on your mom's house. Because mm-hmm. you're so young and you're so mellow. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty mellow. Sometimes that bothers people. They're like, this guy's, this guy's too slow. Well, my husband's too slow. Yeah. My husband, it goes like, my husband's is super chill, and then like Nate Barg- Bargazzi, and I feel like you guys are in the chill guys club. What is this? I don't know. I've always admired, I've always admired turtles. <laughs> they can hide. <laughs> I like hiding. Are you a hider? Yeah, I'm a hider for sure. I yeah, are you an avoidant? Nah, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. I am pretty mellow, but like I was telling you, I also just had food poisoning, so it's going to like yeah. super mellow me out. God, there's nothing worse than food poisoning. I hate. Oh, it. There's a few things worse, like you think cancer. That's pretty bad. AIDS. That's pretty. Well, AIDS you can live now, but yeah, I just yeah. hate puking. I have, I have a severe phobia of vomiting, so I will like <laughs> swallow it down, and I will. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I don't. I don't, like it. I don't like it, but I don't not. You don't not let it happen. Just like it. I don't know. Something about somebody puking is kind of fun, though. Really? Yeah. Well, tell me the fun part. Help me. I don't know. It's just, that's not supposed to happen. So it's like funny <laughs> to see somebody's body do it, you know? That's true. I just, when it happens to me, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> but yeah. when I see it some, some happen to somebody else, I'll laugh. Yeah. You know, stuff goes in. The stuff's yeah. not made to come out. That's so true. There's um in competitive eating, I don't know if you watch like the hot dog eating contests. Sometimes, yeah, those are yeah. fun. So there's a saying, they call it when someone pukes after they competitively eat. It's called the reversal of fortune. <laughs> which is this so stupid. They have all these great sayings. Um. Yeah, you're so quiet, but I think still waters, still waters run deep. Still waters run deep. Yeah, homie, I feel like you run deep. Does that, does that mean on? like mellow people? Are gonna, I think quiet people in general have a lot just buried down in there. So much buried down in there. If you're not talking on the outside, you're talking on the inside. <sighs> you know what I mean? For sure. I don't believe people when you're like, "What are you thinking about?" They're like, "Nothing." I no, don't believe you. Not you're a monster. You're a monster. Yeah. Do you think? See, I have a theory with male comics that. We have penises. Well, it's that's true. You love talking Honestly. about your cocks. <laughs> but I don't trust a male comic who doesn't talk about the dark things or talk about his dick. Or like if you look at Cosby, it was all like, you know, and the cookie crumble and the thing. And like the guy was a monster. Yeah. Everybody it, has a little bit of monster to them. But you got to let it out, man. Yeah. You do have to or you become Bill Cosby. That's so true. So you're a quiet guy. What 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 do you think about? Mm. I don't know. I think about a lot of stuff, some silly, but some pretty dark. Like, yeah, this is one me. of my darker thoughts, but I'm not suicidal, all right? Sure, sure, I just sure. Wanna, sure, sure, sure. Hey, what do you call it? Preface it? We get deep as fuck here. You can say whatever right. you want. I'm not suicidal, so I don't want people to see this and be like, oh my God, you got to talk to somebody. Yeah. No. But, like, I'm 27. Sure. Which I know is, like, young or whatever. But, God damn, like, I've been alive 27 years, like... That's nonstop breathing and thoughts and heartbeats. I like I could use a break from existence, just a year or two of not existing, and then come back. Dude, you know, speak my language. I haven't done any. Like, when's the last time you did anything for twenty-seven years straight besides live? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, give me I know. a time out. Time out, bro. Wait until you're forty-seven. I'm forty-seven, and I felt this way. What you're saying. 
when I was around 32, I was like, what else am I going to do with my life? Like, how many brunches can I have? Like, how many movies can I watch? How many shits can I take? This is all right. going to be so monotonous. Give my, give my ass a break. Yeah. But then I saw this TikTok of this 93-year-old woman walking in the park mm -hmm. in New York City, and the guy was like, huh? you know, what's your secret to life? And she's like, well... I'm ready to die because <laughs> everything hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you do eventually get worn down. Like I, I'm, I'm worn down. I'm, I'm at the point where like the slightest like sniffle I have or like cold or even yeah. now that I had food poisoning, I'll look at my friends and I'm just like, kill Cancer. me. Yeah, I'm dead. Kill me. Do you think, but, but okay, so I, I sense, and I, because I have the same sentiment as you. Uh, by fourteen, I was like, I'm an adult. Actually, by by five, I think I feel like I was a grown up because of mm -hmm. just like my upbringing and stuff. Do you feel like you've been a, an adult for a long time? Um, sometimes, sometimes I feel like, um, maybe I didn't enjoy my childhood as much as I should have. I definitely enjoyed tons of it. Don't get me wrong. I, like I had a fun childhood, but maybe sometimes I didn't. Like I started working like at twelve. And then <laughs> this is funny because when you when you played your intro song, where my mom's at. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom would just take off sometimes. And I was just like, "Yo, where my mom's at?" Um, not to talk bad about my mom on here. Anything. She's a good mom, you know. She, but but where was she? But she where did a, she go? She had a wild side when she was young. She had met a young age. Oh, that makes sense. So, yeah. she, had, so she was out there, kind of like I, I I grew up at my grandma's house. So yeah, my mom when I was a kid, you know, she took off, but she she came back. And she took on. <laughs> yeah. You're like, she took off. Like, okay, so specifically, when did she take off? Like, how um, old were you? I was I was very small. Oh, my God. Like a baby? No, I might have been like, man, I can't even remember. I might have been like in the first or second grade. Dang. And so she yeah. was how old? Mm, I don't know. Because if I was like eight, she had like 16. So like Fuck. 24 or something. So she was really a baby. I mean, yeah. she was a teenager when she had you, so she was not ready. Yeah, and it's like she um she came back to like see me and I was like really mad and and like want to see her. But nah, she she's a good mom. She like got her shit together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which I feel like a lot of people their moms kind of can just take off and I had a lot of friends that their moms just didn't stick around or their dads, you know? Really? Well, I hear, because I, I think there's more shitty dads than there are shitty moms. But, oh, for sure. But yeah, I feel like it's hands down, right? But, <laughs> like, I, I have good friends that, but, like, I won't say his name or anything, but I, I got, like, one specifically, like, we're kind of in the same boat. We, we were neighbors and we grew up with our grandparents. But his parents just, nah. Both of them sucked. Yeah. And it's like, rare when both of them suck. Yeah. Like, I, I got to see my mom and my dad. But my buddy, like, he didn't get to, he saw his mom when he was, like, really small for a few years. And then she took off, and then he didn't get to see her again until he was an adult. Whoa. You know that happened on your mom's house? And you know what happened? Hmm. They ended up falling in love, and they got married. The mom and the kid? The mom just... and the son. You're my son. I'm your mom. Yeah. And they, they were separated early, and then they met, and they fell in love, and they got married. But they knew yeah that is sick in the head right isn't that the yeah. grossest shit you've ever you know heard? what's messed up is she was probably already sick in the head and then she passed that trade down to her son <laughs> right <laughs> it's like a but it's like a perfect match when you think about it <laughs> <laughs> that's so sick it's so, so okay. rad <laughs> like, and we have a sound bite it's like you're my son i'm your mom and then he's like it's just like the gays this is like, like some tlc show like yeah it's even worse it's even lower than that <laughs> so wow so your mom left you're raised by your grandma and then what's dad like what's that story um what's that um that song papa was a rolling stone yeah nah what does that mean it means they don't stick around they go and they fuck other broads oh fuck up your childhood i mean he did that a couple of times i guess i don't know <laughs> but now nah, my dad you know <laughs> him and my mom separated when i was pretty small and uh well yeah they were 16 my Gosh. dad would, would try to get me to go live with him sometimes because he would like pick me up for yeah. like weekends or whatever but um now nah, i was just used to being at my grandma's yeah it sounds like a grandma she's she was older calmer wiser she's probably my age in her 40s <laughs> <laughs> 47 in mexican is like 80 so. hell yeah yeah she's, your abuelita <laughs> was fucking yeah in her 40s so so she took good care of you though 
Yeah. She was a nice lady. Oh, man. My grandma was the best. She was like, I don't know. <laughs> I used to convince her to take me out of school early to take me to the movies, and she would. That's nice. Yeah, she'd take me to, <laughs> she's funny, though. Like, she would take me to Mexico every summer. And she had this pickup truck. She'd pick up all my cousins. And in Mexico, you can ride in the back of a pickup truck, like, no problem, you know? Yeah. So she'd take us to the movies, and then she'd take us to buy snacks afterwards. And one, one night, we stopped at this kind of, like, drive through liquor store type place to get, to get a bunch of snacks. And they have, like, these women in bikinis out there, like, <laughs> bringing us the snacks. And uh, one of my cousins dared me to say, call me to the girl. But, like, in Spanish, <laughs> like, llamame. And so I, I did it, but I told my grandma just to make sure to drive off when I say it because I was really uh, nervous. Shit. And so she would drive off. And then she knew, like, I guess parts of the city where they were, like, prostitutes. So she would drive by them so we could yell <laughs> things at them. That's amazing, so, dude. So she's just laughing her ass off. A bunch of, like, eight-year-olds are just like, yeah, mama. Muchacha. <laughs> that's, but that's the stuff that a good childhood is made of, I feel. Yeah, yeah. that's cool when like whoever is raising you has a good sense of humor i will say about i so my parents split but then they both remarried and out of my four parents three of them had great senses of humor <laughs> who's, the, who's the ugly duck the here? fucking dud was my stepmom was such a dud like, <laughs> just, just, typical eastern european cunt you know like just like Oh, very into the looks and very into like, that's not funny. You're not being a lady. You know? I was like, <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. You know, like she just kind of sucked. But um, one cool thing my dad would do, you know, those little sound machine sound boxes where you put it upside down and then it makes like, like a goat oh, sound. Yeah, or a yeah. Cow. yeah, like we would walk through department stores with those and make the sound. <laughs> They're like, you know, he had a good sense. He would fart in public and like, oh my God, what did you do, Christina? Like he'd blame it on me. And <laughs> I like that kind of shit though. I do that with my kids. I try to have fun with them. Like Hell I let yeah. them bark outside of the window. Like when we come back home from a trip, I'm like, bark out the window. Let them know the Seguras are here. <laughs> like I like that kind of. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fun. fun. It's really fun. It probably is what made you fun. Maybe. My grandma did have a great sense of humor, but she also made me into like an asshole, I think sometimes just because... <laughs> I like to make people mad now, and I think it's because she used to like to make me mad. Like, oh, like she liked was, to fuck with you? Yeah, if I was throwing like a tantrum or if I was just being in a pissy mood, yeah. she would pull out her Kodak camera. She always had a Kodak. Oh, that's me. And she'd be like, let me take an ugly picture of you if you want to be ugly. Let's remember this. you know. And, and I'd get fuck. more mad. And so there's tons of pictures of me just like trying, like like fighting paparazzi <laughs> and really like, leave me alone. Like, <laughs> So now when I'm pissing off my friends, if I see that they're getting mad, I just egg on and egg on. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer that'll help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. We live in Texas now, so the boys in the studio have been rooting for the Cowboys during this year's playoffs. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code WMMA. New customers can bet just five bucks to get 200 instantly instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code WMMA. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsibility gaming resources. This podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place, all on your terms. Squarespace is super easy to use. You can set up uh, one of their professional website templates. It's customizable and easy to update. You can use Squarespace to sell your own merch. Design your products and production, inventory, and shipping are handled for you. 
And if you want to sell your products in person, you can do so by connecting a Square Reader to the Squarespace app and keep your orders, inventory, and customer data in sync with your online store. Squarespace is all around a great product for business owners. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash WMMA to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My husband has that trait too, is that he actually, I think that's a type of comedian, or maybe all comedians, we secretly love pissing people off. It's I think if, if you're if you're taking chances on stage and you're saying things that are a little whatever, you know, that's the fun part. Is I love it. You know what I really love lately is seeing women get mad or get disgusted by what I say. <laughs> I really enjoy it because like because you know you're like you know bitch like you know women like it's just that you haven't been pulled out of the matrix yet. yet. Like you can laugh at farts and caca and penis and pussy and dick and you know all the stuff you're allowed to laugh at it but it's just because society told you that ladies don't like my stepmom right like she was a proper lady all it takes is like a cool girlfriend in sixth grade to be like hey you know you can laugh at that shit right and that's how like, oh. that's how i feel about other men with like uh, a lot of gay, gay jokes stuff. yeah <laughs> oh right like you can you can be like oh i suck my friend's dick is a like, joke I, I've, I've been doing this joke which sometimes <laughs> works and sometimes doesn't and it starts kind. it starts off <laughs> sounding homophobic where i'm like yo dude shouldn't apologize to other dudes because because it gets too gay <laughs> and then i and then i explain it and i'm not gonna explain the whole thing which might be bad it might make me look worse but i explain the whole thing but by the end of the joke i'm just kind of talking about how like i don't want just like this tough guy to get touchy-feely with me i don't like it like if we're gonna settle our differences i was like i don't want to talk about it i don't want to talk about feelings i'd rather just kiss a guy you know <laughs> just one kiss no strings attached like just get over it <laughs> So at the beginning of the show, like half the crowd is with me. By the end of it, the other half is with me. Everybody's just like, "What's the fuck? What's going on with this what guy?" What is like, happening? <laughs> that and then I got I just got ten minutes on how like I don't know, just gay type stuff. I, I think by the end of my show, people are like, "Hey, I think this guy's got issues." <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what's interesting is that I think a lot of male comics deal with dicks. Like, it, there's a lot of like I. I not just your dick, but hom homosexual stuff. It, there's a, a Louis C.K. came on your mom's house, and Louis, I, I adore him. He's so funny, and he's always ha he's always like unconsciously, you know, he's always like talking about dicks and what if I sucked a dick in the panesia and a dick in the ball, and I <laughs> and you're like, and, and I'm like, when I asked him, like, why do you what what is this fixation with dicks? And he's like, because I'm so I'm so afraid of it. Like I'm so like it's so gross, it's so weird, it's so and it. A dick is definitely like a big part of a man's life, bro. It's yeah. like a father. Like you respect it and you love that you have one, but at yeah. the same time you fear it and you fear <laughs> other people's fathers. <laughs> <laughs> like don't let your dad touch me. Yeah. <laughs> it's true because I have two little boys. They're five and eight years old. And I have to tell them constantly, like put your dicks away. Don't touch your dicks in the living room. But I... Uh, I imagine it's kind of cool because it's this external thing and it feels nice and it's this weird appendage. No, it's it, it's the it's like a it's like having a Harry Potter wand. Yeah, I've never seen those movies, but I imagine you never seen Harry Potter. I saw like the first two. Well, it's very powerful. Yeah, I'm gonna watch them. <laughs> don't I don't want people to think I'm like a Harry Potter hater. I'm gonna watch them. <laughs> they're really they're great. I'm just waiting for the right moment. Yeah, the right woman. The right <laughs> or child. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to watch them. I'm not going to watch them alone. You know, that's weird. No, it's fucking weird. I, I don't like adults that do childish things, like like Disney adults. I think hmm. it's fucking queer my, shit. My, my friend is one of those. I'm not going to no. say his name now. <laughs> he goes to Disneyland by himself. What? Yeah. He's a cool guy. He has a girlfriend if that makes it better. Do they go together? We Sometimes. He goes by himself. But he will go without her. This That is the fucking queerest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> He's a single 20 something year old guy and he goes to Disney. Yeah, well, he has a girlfriend. Is that considered single, though? Because you're not married? Yeah. In the married world, if you're not married, you're fucking single, bro. Like, <laughs> that, that doesn't mean a thing to me. Like, yeah. Oh, you're fucking this bitch? Who cares? You didn't wife her up. That's true. Did you make babies with a bitch? I told my girlfriend I will never marry her. That's cool. <laughs> How'd well, that go? I, didn't, I actually, I didn't, I didn't say never. <laughs> I, I was just like, yo, I don't know what my mentality is going to be like when I'm like, you know, 31 or 40 or 35. Like, who knows? Your mindset always can change you know but i was like 
when we first started dating, I was just like, you should know that I don't ever see myself getting married, like doing a wedding and giving you a ring and all that. Like, I couldn't do it. I could see myself being with one person for like ever, you know, or till I die or whatever. Sure. But to actually like, you know, do the paperwork, put the ring, do the wedding, like I'm not going to do it. So if, if that's, if that is something you're like really looking for, then maybe we shouldn't date. What'd she say? Uh, she got real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but then she was just like, nah, like, I'm not going to look for somebody specifically because of that. Like marriage d- thing. Yeah. Like if, if, if I like, if I'm feeling you, then I'm, I'm feeling you. And so we'll see how it goes, you know? It's like, all right, I just I gave you fair warning. See that that's the problem with women. That's that's like a catnip or whatever. It's what what attracts that that's even more attractive because then a real fucked up bitch will be it's like, that's challenge. okay, I'll change him. Yeah, I'll change him. <laughs> Depends on how how messed up she is. She might go in for the kill. She, she has no him. idea who she's dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good that you tell her. I mean, you you know. But you're also so young. I don't. I don't think 27. Is, it's too young to even really get married, right? Yeah, but I'm telling you, we're Mexican. We age faster. That's so true. Yeah, at 14, we're we're like already working on the first kid. <laughs> the career. But you grew up in Texas. Mm-hmm. Which part of Texas were you from? Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Dallas. Okay. And then you spent. So you spent time in Mexico. What part of Mexico? Um, so we'd visit quite a few places. We'd visit a state called Tamaulipas, which is like on the, it's like at the border mm-hmm. and it's technically like, I guess what would be like the East coast of Mexico. Mm-hmm. And then we'd also go to another state called San Luis, which is, um, not too far from there, but it's not a coastal city. And that's like where my grandpa's from. Mm-hmm. So I got a little bit of both. San Luis is more of like the country type, like farms, mountains, cattle stuff like that mm-hmm. tamaulipas is more like ports beaches mm. um but yeah it was cool you know it's crazy like when i go to mexico my cousins like i'm i'm gringo i'm white boy down there mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and then i come over here and they're like you're mexican and i'm like not according to the mexicans <laughs> Psh, so, not even yeah yeah that's interesting because i i can definitely i grew up in southern california and it's mostly that's like Mexico. It is, That's yeah. It's basically Mexico, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. But I sense from you, like, you're really more connected to Mexico than a lot of the people I grew up around in L.A. Because I feel like, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't go, I don't, I never heard of kids going back down. Like, there's like Tijuana, that was our oh, border no. town. We'd go every, like, the minute school was out, like, that yeah. same night. And my grandma would drive. Sometimes we'd take the bus, but my grandma would drive most of the time. Down into Mexico. And so, yeah, she'd go... Like, to any city we had to visit, to any state she'd go, and I, I never once saw her look at a map. <laughs> right, just pigeon brain. Yeah, like, she just yeah. she just knows. Like, that's wild to me. Yeah. In my own town, I got to use the, the stupid yeah. maps, you know? Yeah. Me and my cousins would sometimes get into arguments. Me and my buddy actually had this kind of heated conversation. I wouldn't say it was an argument about, like, um, <clears throat> Mexicans getting treated differently based off the, sh- the color of their skin, like... I have friends who are darker than me and they'll say that life is easier on me because I've always been like a lighter skinned Mexican than a darker skinned Mexican. But I don't think that's true. Like, and I don't mean this in like a negative way, but I feel like in the eyes of, of like most other people, like I think we're just Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you don't think that the other people see gradations of Mexican. Yeah, like, I, don't, I, I don't, I honestly, right? I never went like, Oh, that's a, that's, I just oh that guy's Mexican. Like I never thought about it in terms right. of like is he lighter Mexican than the other guy? I just yeah. know that they're like so the last name, like, oh that's Martinez, Abrego, whatever the fuck these guys are Mexican. Yeah, my buddy's like, no, nah, they Hernandez. do it like without knowing, like subconsciously, I guess. No, I never did that. But then again, like I if you grew up in a big city, you could grow up in a major city in Los Angeles, and I think that's that definitely you're so used to all kinds of stuff. But maybe yeah, fucking that's Texas. True. But then again at the same time, I mean, like I've, I've, you know, just through summers, I've gotten darker and then lighter. Yeah. But I've, I, I, I'll say I'm not as dark as some of my friends who've made this argument. So I can't even say like I'm not in their shoes. So good, good. So do you feel like when you get darker in the summer, do you get treated differently? I don't the next know. time we have to take notice of this. Maybe. 
I don't know. Ah, I don't care enough to take notice of it. I know. I'm just gonna agree to. I'm just gonna agree to be honest. It, it according to the data. Yeah. Of like history. Yeah. Yeah. It has been harder on darker people. This is true. So I'm just gonna agree with him. Like, yeah. Yeah. This you're right. This is true. I think you're right. I just I feel like it, it. I just feel like it doesn't go as deep as some of my cousins make it out to be, <laughs> or my friend. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like. I think it's there. I just. I just don't think it goes as deep as it goes. Like. I don't know. Sometimes when they're making this hard claim, like it's harder on the dark skinned Mexicans than the light skinned, I'm like, you know what, dude, calm down. You're not black. They've had it tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mexicans have it, had it tough. Black people had it way tougher. And way it's, tougher. Sometimes I feel like they're reaching. Like some Mexicans want to get in that boat with black people, and it's like, no. Nah. Come on. You Different. know what I mean? Different strokes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I'm a white lady. I can't really comment. But... Oh, no, you should. You're the best person to comment. <laughs> I'm not the best person to <laughs> I will say, I, dad, I had, so I had, um, my stepdad was Indian and I had three Indian stepsisters. And so like when we'd go out in public and I'd be like, yeah, that's my sister. And then people would trip out on that. And that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, you? they did express some shit over the years of like, it's kind of fucked up. People do treat me different because I'm Indian or, you know. Yeah. It always made me sad. But I, I always hoped that living in a big city full of lots of different people would help help somewhat. I don't know. I think it. I think it helps. Like going to New York or like L.A. Yeah, it's a New whole York. other. It's a whole other feeling out there. Like people are just people. If anybody gets treated badly, it's not even because of their race. It's more like because they like inconvenience you. Yeah, I don't think people in L.A. have time to be like, oh, what color are you? Like you just yeah. you're just a menace because you exist. Yeah, you know, like there's just too many motherfuckers <laughs> there. There's like 16 million people, you know, but. I don't know. I think it would be cool to come back as every different kind of being, you know? But I wish we could have memory of it. Like, you know, there's really reincarnation. People think you come back. Maybe you do have to do that, but you don't get to memorize it until you've done all the races. That will be really cool. So, like, you know, a thousand years from now, I don't know how many races. There's too much time. There's, there's too much math to do. I guess you do, like, 80 years as each race. How many races are out there? Fuck. I don't know, dude. Like Google 20, it. Smart Chad. How many races are there? You do 80 years as each race. Oh, my God. Or even just to come back as a man would be kind of cool. I'd be so afraid of being a woman, honestly. It's awful. I don't, I don't recommend it. Uh -huh. I don't think it's great. I think it sucks, honestly. I've, I don't want to be a man, but I don't think there's many privilege. I mean, look, I'm all, there is the fear of like, oh, will I get walking to a car? You do. I always still think that. And like... I just have memories, too, of being 12 and being sexually harassed when you're like, wait, what? I have tits now? Like, you're just always objectified. Ooh. But then a cool thing happens when you get to be a little older. Like, people calm the fuck down because, like, people still want to fuck you, but it's not the 20 and 30-year-olds that are whistling at you or being shitty. You know? So, like, it calms down, which is nice. I don't know. I think, I oh, think it it's... it still sucks. You have to wait for it to calm down, you yeah. know? Yeah. But I think, too, like, I... I've, uh, especially as a, a woman in comedy, like I've always felt other than, obviously, but I've always been really welcomed by male comics and welcomed by this community. So, like. Oh, I bet a bunch of women hate on you for that, too. I don't guess. I guess. I don't know. I think, I, <laughs> I feel like I've also been, well, I don't know how welcomed you felt, but I feel like I, I've been very easily welcomed. <laughs> And I feel like I have comic friends that kind of hate on that. They're just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. Don't let recipe boredom strike because HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. We love HelloFresh in this office. I mean, it just makes your life so much easier. It's delicious and convenient. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WMMA free and use code WMMA free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. 
That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash WMMA free with code WMMA free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. But I think that you're easily welcome because comics, at least like the old, like we've, you value talent. Talent is talent. And I firmly believe in the power of comedy to transcend color, race. You got one leg, whatever. If you're fucking funny, the room does not care. Oh, agreed. I, yeah. I I feel like I've I've seen and met comics who, even though I don't take any hardcore like political stances, like I don't I don't vote or anything, but I I have heard comics just say things that I'm like oh I don't agree with that or whatever. But it's so funny that I'm like man I I just appreciate your comedy. Yeah. Even if I don't agree with some of the yeah. stuff you're talking about, like funny's funny, you know. A hundred percent. I feel like that kind of a little bit of connection there. Like like dude, I've you know I've heard brilliant male comics who I'm friends with over the years working out bits at the store and there's like you know when you work stuff out it's just it's really hateful in the beginning or whatever because mm-hmm. you haven't found like the the nuances the lines and i've heard like some of my great greatest friends and you're like dude that fucking that was hateful as shit against women but then you see the bit later and you're like oh no that was just him yeah i never took it personally i never because you know i know these people these guys are good guys i i except for the few that are do you ever- the rest are good <laughs> Except for the few that are monsters, <laughs> the rest are pretty cool guys. Huh. Do you ever, um, do you ever draw? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever like you're drawing something, but when you draw it, maybe it just doesn't look right. Like sometimes I've drawn a hand, and not to come back to dicks a lot, but then sure. it kind of like I'm trying to. I, I saw this video where it's like, well, you got to draw the rectangle first and oh, then yeah. draw the line. One time I drew it and I started with the middle and it looked like a penis. So I had to like erase <laughs> it and start over. And that's how comedy is. Sometimes you're saying something you didn't mean yeah. for it to come off that way. Yes. So you got to erase the penis and rewrite the line, you know? Yeah. People yeah. got to understand that. Yeah. There's a working it out thing. Like last night I just went, like I'm working on this shit about my dad. And like some days I hate my dad and some days I love my dad because that's just how it goes. And like, you know, when you go into a bit and like the hate reads too hard. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, these people don't trust me to yeah, go on this Yeah, it's because the stage is like therapy, but sometimes you got to <laughs> yeah, remember that. They're not therapists, you know? No, they're, they don't they're want They're going to judge. <laughs> yeah, they're going to judge. Yeah, fuck, how, dude. How old is your dad? Oh, he's 77. Oh, that's a good age. Lucky number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if he made it to 777? I'd hate it. Yeah. Well, I used to want to be a vampire when I was a teenager. Bro, that would be so cool. Right? Yeah. So my best friend and I, we made a pact when we were teenagers that if one of us became a vampire, we'd make the other one a vampire. (laughs) That's so crazy that you guys were into this before Twilight, pre-Twilight era. Well, here's the deal, man. Twilight is fucking pussy shit compared to the OG novels by Anne Rice. Look her up. Um, that Twilight shit is Christianized vampirism, right? If you notice, they're all very chaste. They wait till they get married to fuck. And like, they don't even, they like French kiss and that's about it in Twilight. It's busted. Pussies. But if you go to Anne Rice, the vampire Lestat, interview with the vampire, those vampires fuck. That, that's, in, that, that's who made interview with the vampire? Hell yeah, dude, Anne Rice. And they, they fuck, they do BDSM. She made a whole line of books under a pseudonym where it's all fucking S and M weird stuff. This is the real G right here. She just died a while back. Maybe did few did you ago. know that um, I am Legend you know, um, I don't with that. Will Smith? You know something? No. So like, I think that's a reboot, and it's like based off of a novel. I might be getting it wrong, but mm. um, those are vampires. Really? Yeah. That's Damn. why their skin burns when the light hits them. Oh, that's cool. But I guess it's like some sort of virus. But it's still vampires. And everybody's like, no, it's not the zombies. And I love doing this argument with people. <laughs> but it's, it's fucking vampires. Look at the facts. They only come out at night. Facts, bro. They bite you and you become one of them. Oh, yeah, dude. You know what I mean? Standard. They just oh, yeah. made it like That's a science fair. vampire. That's like a, vampire. a sci-fi vampire. That's a vampire. But I think like the original movie or something, they were like legit just vampires. I don't, I don't know. I never saw it. Hmm. And they had like capes. I like that Mitch Hedberg joke where he's like, I went to the doctor and, and he sucked blood out of my neck. He's like, that's the last time I go to Dr. Acula. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> he had some good ones. There's a, was it? No, I don't know. It was a Hedberg joke. Oh, you know what joke I like to tell this time of year? It's a David Tell joke. Um, eggnog. You know what eggnog is, don't you? And you're not going to like it. Elf cum. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that. Elf cum. Eggnog is elf cum. 
I, I like buying eggnog that. for people because nobody that I know really drinks it. It's so disgusting. And I just bring it like, hey, I thought you might like this. <laughs> I thought you might like this. <laughs> I'm horrible with money. Raw eggs. You are? Oh, I'm, I do so many dumb things. I yeah. went, we were in, um, actually, I think it was where I got this one. Where is it? Oh, Ontario. Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Ontario and um, my my buddy had just gotten married like a, like a week or two before that. And when I was walking out this restaurant, I saw the cigar store with her lounge and i was like man i'm gonna get him some cigars like as a congratulations and then i was like i should get him a card so me and me and um my buddy went to target and i, I was just like Let, let's get him uh like a card and a bag to put the cigars in but when we were there <laughs> i actually saw uh, the the frozen food section where like the fridge aisle and there's eggnog so i'm like hey man let's get him eggnog with it and then i was like let's just get him a bunch of stupid gifts but like stupid but also something that he likes enough to where he has to <laughs> contemplate not throwing it away <laughs> that's a fine line <laughs> so like i know he likes like japanese art so i found this like calendar with like some japanese pictures in it <laughs> i got him a stapler because i know he, he kind of has like this little home office i got him a stapler i got him so many th- i got him a rubik's cube oh yeah i got him a, you I can't throw him, those away those are all valid gifts right? you need a stapler and you like a rubik's <laughs> I cube. i got him a stormtrooper funko pop <laughs> Uh, what else? I got him Wolverine claws. <laughs> I, got him, I got him Wolverine claws. I got him so many things. I got him like um, those things to wash the dishes, those those little sponges, but it's a smiley face. Mm. Um, I got him so many gifts, and it was just funny to like sit there and be like, "Look, bro, I got you these cigars." He's like, "Man, thank you so much." He's about to get up and hug me. I was like, "No, no, no, hold on, hold on." And then I brought this big bag, and I was just like, "Look at this! It's a stormtrooper, huh?" And then look at this! It's a, it's a, it's a sponge, right? He's like, "Did I do good?" He's like, "Hell yeah, Matthew!" He's like, "All right, well, hold on. There's more." And then like, I was like, "Wolverine claws, huh?" <laughs> Man, it was like I spent like two hundred. I got a magazine. I spent like two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> and just some shit he's gonna have to take on the carry on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. We um sometimes go to the dollar store to buy Tom's sisters things. <laughs> but you have to go to the made for TV or what's that shit called? Made for TV section or it's like it's like at the if you go to like the pharmacy. As seen on TV. Google and, as yeah. seen on TV products. If you want to fucking piss off anybody in your family, <laughs> get them as seen on TV items. I'll show you what I've gotten my in-laws over the years. <laughs> well, the clapper. Oh, did you get him the scrub daddy? Is that, that one, the smiley the scrub man? Daddy, yeah. <laughs> That's so stupid. I got him the scrub daddy. Because it's stupid, but you kind of want it. Yeah. You want to <laughs> use it. The vajetti, which makes vegetable noodles you know <laughs> the vajetti <laughs> that's <so> stupid <laughs> a vajetti they could have thought of a better name than that oh my god yeah, these are the gifts you got uh, for the staff yeah we ran out of time this year you guys would have gotten a whole new crop <laughs> of as oh look at this one's my favorite you know how you like the edges of the brownie Oh, well, that's man. a pan where it's all edges. Bro, I actually <laughs> saw that online one time. My teacher showed it to us because uh, he had he had to go to, he he would go to some website where they sell shit like that. Yeah. No, oh, excuse me. That's so burp. rad. I actually been thinking about that just randomly for the last ten years. The brownie thing. Yeah, I was you like, I wonder it. where I can find it. Well, you, there you go. But I'm not gonna bake. I don't even have an oven. That's true. You're 27. You're a you don't have an oven? Where do you live? And my dad's, he has an oven, but it's not my <laughs> oven. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with it. Do you think you'll get your own place now that you're a successful comedian? Well, I'm actually building a house on my dad's land. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, that way if anything goes bad, they're like, that's his land. That's not even my land. Like, <laughs> that's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's his land. Okay. Um, is it in Dallas? Is that where you live? Nah, it's uh, it's like out in the country. I don't want to say where. No, don't say where. But okay. it's out in the country. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's because I, I st- like when I said I'm I'm done with money. Like I mean, it, I I started buying cars. Yeah. It's like first yeah, time what, I was I was able to buy. That's what all like, male comics do. Welcome to the club. Have yeah. you met my husband? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I started buying cars, and so I won. I was able to keep. At a, at a family member's house in their garage, but that's not, I can't do that forever, you know? Yeah. Um, the other has just been outdoors, and it's it was already beat up when I bought it, so it's like, all right, well, I can live with that. Um, but now now there's another one, 
And it's like, I can't leave that one outside. So, but I didn't buy that one until I thought of this idea. Mm. My dad wanted to build a shop. We used to have a, like a paint body shop when I was like very small. So my dad wanted to build a shop on his land. Mm. And so he put down a, a slab of like concrete or whatever, where he was going to build it. And I told him, let me buy that slab. Like I'll, I'll pay him whatever he paid for it. And, and you know, I'll buy it more so you can make a profit if you want or whatever and, and let me build my own house slash shop on it so where the bottom floor will be my own personal shop for cars like a garage and then the top will be like the living area that's dope and my dad actually does like home remodel and, and home construction for a living oh no way perfect mm-hmm. so he was just like well I'll, I'll build you the house like do it through me or whatever and I was like hell yeah perfect so yeah so now my main focus is like the garage part though because i want to get the cars in there asap yeah those are should. my babies yeah and but yeah but the top i don't know i don't know exactly how to design a house all i know is this though <laughs> i want a huge walk-in closet oh yeah and uh i had them put in like a a secret escape from the closet to the garage That's like batman up. style so i can That's go down a, a ladder that way, if you're like in my living room, and then I'm, I'm not you specifically, but you know, yeah, people, yeah. the theoretical, yeah, yeah, and then I am like, yeah, just like they're Fuck. annoying. I could just be like, I'm gonna go change my shirt real quick, and then bust out. Boom, I'm out of there, dude. Can I tell you, I've wanted to build a secret, like a tunnel, from my room to my office, so I can bypass my children. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like just hide, because that's my secret. I have like a goth room that's all weird and dark. That I go into sometimes just to get away from my family. I should build a secret tunnel. Hmm. That's such a man. I think every mom needs a secret tunnel. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, I so right now, so I like I said, I grew up at my grandma's. My mom always lived with us. So I had two moms there to like if I catch them, I'm like, hey, can you do this for me? Can you help me with this? <laughs> always. Yeah. Now I'm living at my dad's and even my stepmom's not safe. Like Yeah. I I'm upstairs though. So I'm I'm still in my dad's house. I'm upstairs. I'm the only one who lives upstairs. That's good. So you have your own privacy. Yeah, but I gotta like go down and I'll I'll, I'll duck my head. Like I'll peek my head through the stairs, yeah. and if I catch them, like. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> you do, do you ever cook for you and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she cooks. She cooks for all of us. She's like a, like a super mom, you know. That's so sweet. I there's no way she could be enjoying it all like the mouth she cooks and like does for us. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> no no. Way. no, there is no way. It's it's a full time. It's a full time. You're a full time chef. We know, but but here's the thing. It's a weird thing. I, I actually enjoy cooking. I like it. But you you know that you're feeding your boys. You know yeah. I have two little boys and I have Tommy and I. Tom's like my third big kid. And I, you just you feel good knowing that you're you're feeding boys because they eat a lot and they need to grow and stuff. And yeah, I feel bad for my nice. my sister because while we're all sitting down, this is like some old school yeah. thing. She's just like. She'll call my sister like, "Hey, help me yeah. do all this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, "But my brother helps too. He's a he's a good he's a good boy. My yeah. brother helps my my stepmom a lot too. Not as much as my sister. Which my brother, if he hears this, he's gonna be like, I help. What are you talking about? Yeah, I help more than her. Help. But he he does help, just not nearly as much as my sister does. My no. sister is like my savior. Like when I'm not home, she's like my son's mom, basically. No, my son. Don't get me wrong. My son has a mom, but like. When my son's over there and I can't be there, my sister just... Pfft. We didn't even get into that. So how old is your son? He's four, almost five. Dang, so you had a kid at 20... Sorry, my mouth. 23? No, I was... 24? 20... I think I was already 22 when he was born. Dang. I might have been 22. So yeah. no wonder you feel old. You grew up fast, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah you did it young, bro. There's gonna... Yeah. There's gonna be so many Mexicans that if they hear me say that, they're gonna be like, ha, I was 16. Like, <laughs> You were already a man. <laughs> but do you think it lit a fire under your ass to be a comic? Like to go out there and just get it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I was, I was, people don't understand a lot of the time when I say this, but I'm a bum at heart. Like I'm always be a bum till I die. Like I was so satisfied with my lifestyle before my son was born. Yeah. I was cutting hair out of my grandma's house, out of my bedroom. I was in barber college, but I just like, I sometimes go, um, just to hang out really. Yeah. Uh, Cause it was like a pay as you go. You had to pay like three hundred bucks a month. And if I had the money, then I'd go for the you know the money. If I didn't, I just didn't. I couldn't go. So I was cutting hair out of my house. I'd sometimes go to barber college. I was uh, doing open mics and showcases like every night of the week. I was, I was doing comedy every night. Oh, you liked it then? You, you oh, I the, loved you're it. You're obsessed with it. You have to be obsessed. Yeah. yeah, but I but I didn't have the mentality to 
I guess, make like the business type decisions for comedy. I was doing whatever show they asked me to be on. I just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't care what it led to or if it led to anything. Like if I got to open for somebody, cool. Hell yeah, you know, I take it. But yeah, I was making like two, three hundred bucks a week, and I had a car that sometimes worked. I was, I was living. You know, mm-hmm. I was, I was satisfied. My grandma cooked for me. Like I was good. And then I, I found out that I was possibly going to be a father, and I still didn't quite get it together. But um, I, yeah, once, like, the, the second I saw my son, in, you know, it was like, the, the second I held him, it really kicked in, like, mm. oh, shit, like, now life is serious. Yes. And it kind of made everything that I ever stressed about, worried about, got angry about, emotional about before, it was like, wow, I might as well have been living in this video game, imaginary yeah, world. Yeah, bullshit world. Yeah. yeah. I was like, now, true. now my decisions matter. Yeah. So For I knew sure. that. By the time he was having to go to school, I knew by the time he had to go to school, I wanted him to go to a better school or live in a better neighborhood. So, and, and I had to get my shit together. But I also knew that I wanted to make the money doing stand-up yeah. to get him to move. Like, I didn't want him to, to, to be able to, I, I was like, either I have to move or I, I, I wasn't with his mom. We haven't been together since he was like a few months, you know. But I knew that I either had to get them in a better living situation or myself in a better living situation um, by the time he was in school. But I, I knew I wanted to do it through stand-up. I didn't want to do it because I was a barber and, some, and I'd also work at a body shop sometimes, like painting cars. Mm-hmm. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to do it that way. Yeah, so I was dude. like, I had, I had to really put the gas on comedy yeah. and make, make sure that like it took off before he was in school. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah, when we um, got pregnant, um, we got pregnant when I got fucking pregnant. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was uh, kind of nervous because Tom was with Tom was headlining. I was just, I was headlining too, but you know we were just right on the precipice of like, okay, we're finally gonna break through. Your mom's house was going. We were making some dollars, and Al Madrigals goes, you know, children are a blessing. You'll end up making money when you have children. And we were like, no fucking way. And lo and behold, I had our first son. We were living in a nine hundred foot. 900 square foot guest house in Redondo, like a back house. <laughs> and we had Ellis, we had two dogs and it was chaos. And I go, I think we should move Tom, but we don't have any money. How, how old is your oldest? Uh, he's eight now. He's eight. Okay. And, he, so and Tom goes, no baby, we got money. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, look at the bank account. And I was like, wait, what? when did this shit happen? Because his Netflix special had just dropped. And then he was starting to make, and we're like, all right, let's fucking move, dude. But that's a blessing. I think, I think children can motivate especially men because i saw tom going to overdrive like the minute i got pregnant he was just like yep 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 yo yep, because yep, i yep. like i like it's crazy seeing the mother of your child hold your like have your child in them you almost feel like oh shit like i did that like i better <laughs> I better I, be responsible yeah for i better be responsible because i caused that like yeah. to both of them like I, I, I just dragged you two into this, like... Yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy. I remember when my son was tiny, man. I would stay up with him all night and I do the bottles and all that. Yeah. And it was rough. That it was, sucks. It was rough. And I remember the first night that he slept through the entire night. <sighs> I thought he died. Yeah. I was <laughs> yeah, afraid. Me too. I was so, so scared. Too. Yeah. Because he, he always would fall asleep right here on my arm. And, and then he, I remember <sighs> he fell asleep, like, almost right at midnight. I remember <sighs> that. And I knocked out, and like at seven o'clock a.m. on the dot, I just woke up. I was like, "Oh my god!" He was like, "Oh no, he's fine. He's fine." I, was like, I, know. I know those. The man, a lot of people don't don't understand that there there is no fear and anxiety like having a newborn, and the first time you take that baby home, and the nurses are like, "All right, here's your baby," and you're like, "I don't know how to put it." I'm in like, the car "Why seat. are you letting me do yeah. this right now?" <laughs> I know. That's a scary shit. Never in, like we couldn't even put Ellis in the car seat, Tom. And I, we had to ask the nurse. Like I, I've never. <laughs> can you help me fucking do this? Like you know, can you and, just drop him off at my house later. <laughs> God, the anxiety and like yeah, like you're saying, like I would just watch them breathe. The first, especially the first baby, you're just like, are you breathing, dude? Like I remember when I first <gasps> felt my son's heartbeat just randomly, like at night, like just feeling it, just to feel it. Yeah. Oh, that's so scary. That's so scary. I was like, <laughs> so oh my scary. God, can this just never stop, please? Like. <laughs> Just make sure mine stops way before this. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's awful. Or like b- breathing. Sometimes Ellis would just slow down, you know, so much. I put my fucking hand under his nose. Like, are you breathing, bitch? Uh-huh. 
Sometimes it's people scary. are like, I'll never, I never want to have kids. I'm enjoying life too much. And it's like, nah, good. Like, I, I always encourage people, like, enjoy the shit out of whatever you got to yeah. do, you know? But I feel like after a certain age, like, you have to. It opens up another side of your brain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, you, you grow. You, ha- you got to have a kid eventually. I think or, so. Or you better just be, like, a super cool. If you're, like, 50 you ever had a kid yet, you better be a cool-ass 50-year-old. Yeah. Like, a, like a good person. Yeah. Don't be, like, a, like, don't try to be young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I feel that way, too. I think that, I think there are some people who choose not to have children for very good reasons. There's a lot of great reasons not to have For sure. Them. You're too traumatized, you know, whatever the fuck it is, absolutely don't do it. But then if there is so much benefit to having kids, it, it literally does rewire you in such a meaningful way. Yeah. Where you don't see, I don't see you, like if I had met you before I had kids, I would think of you totally different. But I look at a 27 year old little, in my eyes, you're just a little baby comic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though you're great, you've got kid and you've got this career. But in my eyes, you'll, you're, you're somebody's son, you know? And like, it's always going to be that. That's true. I was not made in a lab. You were not made in a lab. Mm-hmm. And you have, you have empathy and love for, for the, at least I do. I don't know how you feel towards the human race, but you have a lot more empathy for sure. I think so. Yeah. Because you know what parents go through, like what we were just talking about. Somebody fucking did that for you. Like just panicked. Like, are you breathing? Are you fucking alive? Mm-hmm. Dude? <laughs> it's a lot of stress. Anyway, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, so you can see Ralph. He's on tour now starting January 12th. Are you going everywhere? Or are you just fucking? Nah. I mean, eventually I will. Um I'm not. I'm not gonna remember all the cities that I'm going to. You don't have to bring. But but you're in America. You're touring the U.S. I'm touring the U.S. Yeah. And it's it's my tour. It's called the Super Cool Ass Tour. <laughs> <laughs> and the it's, you can find the tickets and the dates at barbosacomedy.com or follow me on Instagram at Ralph Barbosa zero three. I love it. Well, I'm so happy for you. You're a lovely addition to our comedy family, our comedy world. I consider you fam now, so please come back and do these shows whenever you're in Austin. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, dog. And I hope you continue to crush it. You're you're a wonderful voice in comedy, and you're a sweet, sweet bro. Thank you, and thank you. I love you. I love you, mommy. <laughs> okay, <geez. laughs> All right, until next time, <laughs> stay cool, moms. Bye. Peace. Peace. Hi, Mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you. <laughs>